Math is the food for my brain. I think that's part of the process of research that at some point of time you don't want to think about your work and you want to go do something else which is in a completely different direction and that's where dance really helps me. Sometimes counterintuitive, but there's a lot of math that goes into dancing as well, at least with Bharatanatyam. There's a very fixed beat pattern that we call a tal, which is the underlying basis of all of this music. And so when you compose or when you when I choreograph to that music, I have to consistently pay attention to what this beat pattern is because I, I cannot deviate from it. So I'm subconsciously doing certain calculations of rhythm and you know the number of beats in every count even when I'm choreographing. Dance is geometry in space. Uh, you know, my, my body might be the tool, but I am carving geometry in space also because the dance form is sort of symmetric when you do the pure dance movements. You know, whatever you do on the left, you have to repeat on the right, and it has to be symmetric. So I guess, these two things are sort of the two facets of my, my personality in some sense. So my research area is uh, the field of geometric group theory. Uh, this is a branch of mathematics that sort of sits at the intersection of algebra, geometry and topology. So you work with a lot of groups that are very topological and geometric in flavor. Instead of studying them from just the perspective of algebra, you try and you understand them using uh, geometric methods or topological methods. I ask myself questions that are related to um, ways in which a group can act on a hyperbolic space. So this is a sort of dynamical relationship between a group and some space. And the idea is if I can tell something about this dynamical action, then I can say something concrete about my group. <laughs> Math was always my favorite subject, even in school. I think I was in high school when my high school teacher said something very profound. She said, math is the language of logic. And I had never thought of math in those terms before even though that was exactly what I had been doing all this time. It really is sort of the founding principles behind all of physics, science and technology that we have today and I think that's when sort of the idea of me studying math further sort of planted itself in my brain. So I did my bachelor's degree, I got my master's degree in India and I don't think I ever thought at that point of time that I might do research work. I think I was more inclined then to be a teacher. But then one of my professors in my master's program said, you know, why don't you think about getting a PhD or just consider getting a PhD? And I said, well, it's not a bad idea. It turns out I really like research work and I, I did this independent research project with her as well before I joined my PhD program. And it, it turns out I love this process of discovery. Uh, this this process where you start with some intuition which is based on your understanding and you just follow your way. I dance a style of dancing called uh, Bharatanatyam. This is one of the nine classical Indian dance forms that currently exist. Uh, the dance form itself is very old. It, there's evidence that shows that the dance form existed even 3,000 years ago. And it's, it's sort of intertwined with the Hindu temple culture of southern India, where it was originally used for religious and pur purposes of worship. And it's now sort of found its way into, you know, the more open spaces where, you know, other people can enjoy this dance form. Traditionally, when, per when people dance Bharatanatyam, they're often depicting stories from Hindu mythology, but I try to find more modern interpretations for those uh, stories from mythology. So, for instance, we have this deity in Hindu mythology uh, called the Ardhanarishwara. The deity is literally half man and half woman. And rather than performing the piece a traditional way, I try to interpret it in today's world uh, as evidence of gender being non-binary or as an instance of you know equality between all genders. 
So the reason I started dancing was because I watched this performer who's actually extremely famous in India. Her name is uh, Srimati Rama Vaidyanath and she's one of the world's leading exponents in Bharatanatyam. And I watched her dance on stage when I was three years old. Mm. And there was just something beautiful and very moving about the way she danced. And so I went home and I told my parents, look, I really, I really want to learn. And my parents said, okay, let's wait. Maybe, you know, your interest won't hold out, but it did. And so when I was eight, they said, okay, clearly this means a lot to you and you should start learning. And I think that's the reason I still enjoy dancing so much because to me, I'm, I'm not a very religious person myself. I am more spiritual than anything else. Uh, I'm definitely not ritualistic, but dancing is a way for me to sort of find this spark of humanity inside myself and to reflect on it. And it also gives me the space to creatively explore, um, you know, my spirituality in a completely different dimension or a realm. And I think that's the reason it's, it's stuck with me through the years. Um, People are often surprised when I say, oh, I do math and I do dance, and I always say, well, math is food for my brain, but my dancing is the food for my soul.